Hi, welcome to the Wurtenberg Family Farm with Don and Brenda. Come and join us as we whitewash our 180 year old root cellar. Isn't this a cool root cellar? I love my root cellar. We bought the farmhouse four years ago, and when we first got it, well, I was excited to have a root cellar, but it was a junk hole. It had been used for storage. It was just disgusting. So phase one was cleaning it all out. Donnie did that because there was a lot of spiders involved. <laughs> phase two, we jumped right in and built shelving and all that kind of stuff to have places to store food. Then after we got that done, we realized we had a radon and ventilation problem. So we finally got that solved. That's another whole video. Now, Donnie says we need to whitewash it. So today we are starting the video about whitewashing our root cellar. And apparently it's a very involved process. I'm chomping at the bit because I have food to go in here. So we're gonna get this project going, right dear? <laughs> right. <laughs> Just a little more on our root cellar. Um, as you may recall from other videos, the root cellar is actually six steps down from our larder. And the larder is a typical limestone built basement, 180 year old farmhouse. So from the basement level, we come down six steps and we're in this beautiful root cellar. You can see the walls here are all built with the native limestone. And of course the, the mortar is a lime based mortar because it's built pre 1900. And they did a great job with uh, walls. And there's a few areas where it's actually built right into the limestone that's part of the ground. And, but on the top, then I think for the artistry, they used brick to make this beautiful archway. And I'm so impressed that 180 years later, this is in such good shape, the brickwork all across. So again, that's one of the reasons that we're going to uh, whitewash it. And many of you have given us uh, suggestions over the years. Um, and it's the right thing to do. So it's going to give us protection um, for just cleanliness and antibacterial protection and also prevent uh, molds and other things from growing. So I'm anxious to get started on this and as you could see before Brenda is too. All right we're going to get started here. Uh, first I have some Hydrated lime, I chose to get a good quality lime putty. Um, I think it's gonna be the best to work with and the most stable. Now, you can see I have my PPE on because this lime putty is calcium hydroxide and it has, it is very caustic. And you remember from high school, your pH scale. Um, this is 12.4 which um, if left on your skin and other could uh, tend to burn. You know, a lot of times we, something that's, um, that could burn you, we think of it's acidic. Well, remember acids on the low end of that scale, like vinegar and what have you too, but this is on the upper end. So Brenda said, I'm not allowed to bore you with too much uh, information on, on lime and all that stuff. So. Here we go. It's basically a, <clears throat> a four to one mix. I gotta, I'm going to get roughly one container of the putty. And you can see it already has fluid. Now this comes with water on top and that's to keep it from calcifying and getting hard before, before we're ready. So I'm going to they recommend you start off slowly and just put uh, mix a little bit of water with it to loosen it up. If you put too much with it, then um, you end up with just big clumps that are really hard to hard to work. So I'm going to use an old-fashioned paint stirrer here and just start to cut it up and loosen it up here. And I I also have a mixer on a drill which I will. Uh, use eventually once I begin to loosen it up.
right, the got about a quart, quart and a half mixed up. We're going to get painting here, or applying, I should say, the lime wash. I've never done it before, but I've uh, heard that uh, you put the coat on, it's kind of translucent, and over the next day or so, it'll begin to whiten up a little. Now, it's going to need at least three coats, maybe four coats. So let's, uh, let's see what happens here. And we're losing a little bit of the outer mortar. So not a very clean process, I'd say, to get started here. Most times before applying a whitewash, they recommend that you spray the walls with a light mist because you want the material to have moisture in it. But what you don't want for it is to draw the moisture right out of the whitewash immediately. You want it to have time to set up and to calcify. In this case, we know it's 100% humidity and when you touch the walls, it's actually damp down here. So I don't think we need any additional moisture in the wall. So we're gonna to continue to apply the whitewash. Okay, it's the first day this morning, what, about 10 o'clock or so, we put the first application of lime wash on, and now it's around dinner time, six o'clock, and boom, look at it, it's still not even dry. And look how white, how bright it is already. It's uh, made a huge difference, and, uh, and this is only one, only one coat, and um, it's still not completely dry. You know, and, um, so we're going to wait till tomorrow and put a second coat on. Um, I'm just really encouraged though, very encouraged. So the first day was the hardest and it was hard work because particularly because this is such uh, the, the um, mortar is so old that we had to kind of brush over it to get the loose part off. And I think that the lime wash is going to help make it secure so we're going to get less dust coming after this so uh, i'm going to step right outside the door and show you another experiment that i did you may recall if you saw the previous videos behind here we we had um, some piping for some from ventilation under there so you put these old barn beams on here and some of these had some natural whitewash from years ago so I decided I think I'm just going to put the whole thing with the whitewash over it so I did an experiment this morning um, you can see what it was before and then uh, this was actually old but I put new lime wash on and that dried pretty well already one coat and just look at the difference what one coat does but I think this is pretty cool. I'd love to know how old this, the remnants of the lime wash is on these uh, old barn beams. I mean, they could easily be over 100 years old. Doesn't look like much, does it? All right, this is the morning of day two. I'm very encouraged, very encouraged. In fact, look behind here with just one coat 
of the whitewash. Look at the big rocks. Look how they um, are reflecting the white and absorbed it. Really clean, beautiful white. Now, uh, I did suspect that we would have kind of a tan color because the old lime mortar mixed with the tan sand was loose. And when we put the whitewash over it, it kind of mixed together. So I, um, some of the sand is still showing through. I'm hopeful with the second and the third coat that we'll get a more consistent um, covering across. But look up here at the bricks and the arch. Look at that. These are red bricks, as you recall. And with just one coat, it's amazing how they've transformed. Uh, it's no longer going to feel like a dark hole in the wall here uh, when we come down in the room. We're going to be able to see the vegetables and we'll be able to see what's going on and be able to pick the ones uh, a lot easier. So I'm encouraged and uh, ready. Brenda, you ready? Thumbs up for another uh, I'm day? I'm ready for another day. <laughs> okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, before we get started on day two, we have to make sure that our lime wash is prepped. So we have leftover from yesterday and it's settled out. I want you to see, I have to stir it now. So if you can come up and look in, the water is on the top. It's not actually water soluble. The lime, very small particulates are actually just suspended in the water. So they settle out. So I'm going to stir across there you can see you can see now the lime particulate coming up and they're so fine particles they say they stay suspended for quite a while but if you don't stir this up every so often then you're not going to get an even distribution so also day two we're going to try something new you know the old farms they used to have a, a big truck or a wagon with a with the premix would come and they would go in and spray it all across the barn, all the timbers and the walls, and they could get a very good even application and it wouldn't take as long as what we did yesterday brushing it out by hand. So we're gonna try putting a little bit of this in just one of our older agricultural sprayers. We're gonna try spraying it on the wall and then we will probably follow it up with a little bit of brush, but it could be a lot faster than just manually brushing the whole thing. So we'll see if it clogs up the nozzle on this or not, but uh, first experiment here on day two. Let's see what happens here. Wow. Let's see. Now. Hmm. Okay, I don't have much, it's either clogging up or, <laughs> I don't know. It's a small tank, it doesn't hold much. Okay, we completed two coats on the, the root cellar here and it's making an amazing difference. Not only does it look lighter and cleaner, but if you remember in the beginning when we started to apply the whitewash, sand, mortar, everything was falling down. Now with the coats on there, it's soaked into that uh, mortar and it's tight now. So we're not gonna get the dust that we had before or any I think it's going to slow down any deterioration in this 180 year old root cellar. So very encouraged. We're going to do one more coat. Now we did day one and day two. We skipped a day to let it to calcify and harden because it's near 100% humidity here. But now it's really solid. I think it's ready for day three. So this is hard work, by the way. The first coat is absolutely the hardest. The second coat is a little easier. We're hoping that the third coat is just a piece of cake.
Well, the third coat is finally done. <laughs> and it might have been easier, but it was definitely not a piece of cake. But it looks great though, doesn't it? It looks amazing. It's bright, cheery almost. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And um, it looks clean, it is clean, and it's gonna help with uh, prevention of mold. And the biggest surprise to me though, is how it changed the mortar on the wall and it tightened it all up and it's secure. And we no longer have bits of mortar falling down and the dust, so it's clean in every way. Yeah, no crumbs falling off if you accidentally touched the wall. Yeah, so was it worth it? It was worth it. All right. I was in a hurry to get it done just because I have food. I'm excited to put it down here and actually use my root cellar for the first time in four years. All right, so we're gonna close the video then with you loading all of the good stuff yeah. in here, right? You get to see me having fun. But before that, I'm gonna take a minute to share a few of the things that I learned during this process. Okay, I'd like to share a few things that I learned about lime or whitewash. First of all, I didn't know anything about it. That's why I kind of drug my feet in this process. And it was difficult, frankly, to find people in the area that were experts on it. Um, so I wanted to find the perfect historic mix of lime wash and whitewash. And it turns out that there is none. It turns out it's all regional. Every region, every country, the lime and lime wash is different. Some of it is because the lime itself is different, made with seashells versus um, just with limestone or even chalk. And then some of them have um, contaminants in it that make different kind of lime. Also, um, in each region, they made the lime differently. They put additives in them, which were some of them seemed very unusual, like molasses or fat or milk. Um, and then they also, some of them put pigments in there to get different colors. Not everybody wanted the white lime wash. So that was um, interesting and a challenge. And I just had to realize there's no real definition of lime or lime wash. And so I stayed very traditional and just do, did hydrated lime with water to make a pure white lime mix. Just a word of caution, I've seen some formulas recently been reposted and reposted that contained not only the lime, the hydrated lime, but a salt mix. Um, I'd be very careful with that. I finally, I found a, a regional expert and he said, you really don't want anything salt, especially if it has to do with um, mortar and stone and masonry products. So uh, I took his advice and no salt, just a straight hydrated lime mix. Okay, now to actually make my lime wash. Um, I had to find the right materials and that turned out to be more difficult than I expected. I went to the big box store and I said, I need some lime. Well, they sent me to their ag department and the garden department, and they just wanted crushed lime. Well, that's not at all what you want. Um, if you look here, this is a piece of limestone. And when you crush it, you might think, well, I just want lime to put on the wall. So if I crushed it like this and then powdered, that's what that lime is that you buy. And then we'll just put water in it and the lime will be in suspension and the water will put it on the walls. Well, all you're gonna do there is put lime dust on the wall when it dries, it's just all gonna be dust and falls off. So that's not at all what lime wash is. Lime wash and lime that's used in construction is this calcium carbonate, the stone, but it's put through a kiln and it's heated and it drives off the carbon dioxide and it creates different compounds. Now I'm not gonna go through all the compounds. If you're really interested, look at the carbon, look at the lime cycle online. But it changes um, its, its chemical state and when you put water in it, put it on the wall as lime wash, the carbon dioxide that was shut off from the heat re-enters and then it calcifies and it again turns into the same material that's in this stone. So you have a fine layer of um, limestone over your wall and that's what gives its protection. Now you do have to buy the right lime. So we said previously you don't buy agricultural lime. You have to buy hydrated lime. The tricky part is that there's other terms that sound like hydrated lime that are different. For example, there's hydraulic lime which is a type of hydrated lime, but you don't want that because it hardens um, underwater. So you can mix up your material and then it begins to harden even while 
uh, you know, over a few hours. The benefit of using lime putty like I had is that it is um, lime, the calcium hydroxide, but has excess of water and that prevents it from hardening. So we can use it over multiple days, weeks, and even months in, in, in stores in a container. So I recommend, if you can, get the lime putty. If not, get the powder, the calcium hydroxide, and you can mix it. It's roughly one part of the calcium hydroxide powder to four parts water. If you got the putty like I have, it's about one mix of putty to one or even two of the water. Because again, it has excess water and it's already hydrated. So they all end up about the same mix. So it worked out very well once I became comfortable that I had the right materials. Um, and I wish you well in it. And what I really recommend is that you find somebody that's a regional expert that can help you and guide you with any questions you might have. All right, he was more excited about the science and the research and stuff. I'm just excited to get food in my root cellar. This is the first time since we bought this place four years ago that my root cellar is gonna function. So now I get to put all my potatoes, my beets, my carrots, my squash in the root cellar. What are they? Spaghetti squash. I didn't get nearly as many as I wanted to this year, but huh. that'll be some for us to have over the winter. Yeah. And in a couple of weeks, we'll be bringing in a lot of apples. We still have to pick our apples. So what do you have over but here? I have the whole top shelf is all carrots stored in damp sand, which is what everybody says to do. So we'll see if it works. And then my poor potato crop. We didn't get a real good potato crop this year either. There's still a few more to come in here, but that's it for the potatoes. And on the other side, I have my red beets and my golden beets. Where are they? Right over here. You have it marked with a G for golden. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have some fresh beets this winter. Nice. So this is exciting. I actually have a functioning, beautiful root cellar. This, awesome. This is one of the most thrilling things of this farmhouse for me. Yeah. How exciting. Well, thank you for joining us in what is hopefully our last root cellar project. <laughs> We've got the ventilation done, the radiation done, beautiful shelving, and it's whitewashed. So he's happy that it's done. No more whitewashing, at least in here. And I'm just happy I get to use my root cellar after four years. So we're both very happy at the moment. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.